Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons in its ninth year of history, 1982. We're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons history through the filter of clear, catalysts, locations, entities, artifacts, and relationships. All right, who is our catalyst for Dungeons and Dragons in 1982? Steven Spielberg with E.T., right? So here E.T. establishes Dungeons and Dragons as a major um, force within American games, right? When in the very beginning, so uh, Steven Spielberg is coming off of Jaws, which is an absolute rock star, incredible success, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Everybody knows Steven Spielberg is a rock star director. They're super hyped for his next film. One of his next films is E.T., right? So E.T. comes out. This is Everybody knows it's going to be a blockbuster. It is a blockbuster. It just gets, it knocks it out of the park. And Steven Spielberg shows an American family. He shows a family in divorce, which is a major trend starting in America at that time, or really starting to really, the ball is rolling at that time. He shows, um, he shows a brother who can't get into a Dungeons and Dragons game as a Dungeons and Dragons game is being played at the kitchen table. This shows America that D&D &D is on the scene. It's, and Hollywood is saying, this is what the cool kids are doing, right? Like, and it, it, it's Hollywood embracing for the first time Dungeons and Dragons. Watch closely. It's not going to be too long before we see what else Hollywood is doing with Dungeons and Dragons. What's the location? San Quentin. <laughs> San Quentin State Prison is our location, all right? San Quentin State Prison uh, is, in 1982 is establishing its full, establishing its rules and its procedures for its prisoners, right? Dungeons and Dragons has a long history with the game being played in prisons. When you are locked up, what is more desirable than the ability to travel to any world? And so San Quentin, to, right now in 2019, Dungeons and Dragons is played in San Quentin to this day, right? And so San Quentin is one of the first prisons that will be a location that will be establishing goodwill for the game of Dungeons and Dragons and saying, even though it uses pens and pencils, even though it uses paper, which can all be used by um, prisoners to do bad things, the ability for them to think beyond the walls they're in and all the good things that this game brings are worth the dangers that having having those tools put into the hands of prisoners is totally worth it, right? And so San Quentin to this day, San Quentin State Prison to this day right now uh, allows and actually has players who play Dungeons & Dragons in prison. Pretty incredible. All right, um, and, and uh, so... Next, who is our entity? Our entity is Tom Hanks. Oscar award-winning Tom Hanks appears in 1982 in Mazes and Monsters. And in the very same year, while Hollywood is embracing Dungeons and Dragons through E.T., it is denigrating Dungeons and Dragons through Mazes and Monsters, saying that Dungeons and Dragons is a, uh, is a threat to college students, right? And they're playing this game in tunnels underneath universities. And you need to be frightened about what's going to be happening to your kids. And here we start to see some very challenging days where Dungeons and Dragons TSR will need to defend its game, Dungeons and Dragons, to the public. Okay? And that continues throughout the 80s. All right? So here, so there we see that, you know, that, I, that happening. Okay? That you know, that scare of the 80s. Okay. All right. 1982. What is our artifact? Our artifact for 1982 is the butterscotch My Little Pony, a small, tiny toy, right? Which will harbinger the owner of the entire Dungeons and Dragons franchise as Hasbro. Hasbro. So in 1982, you see the butterscotch My Little Pony come out and that MLP, that My Little Pony, to, being sold in 1982, begins the war chest, the money roll up, the millions and even billions of dollars that will be that will be created by the toy industry that will allow Hasbro to buy Dungeons and Dragons much later in its history, right? Lock, stock, and barrel. It will buy it the way I buy coffee at the Wawa. 
right? You'll just say, I'll take that, boop, right? And so Hasbro acquires um, uh, Dungeons and Dragons years later, but that Butterscotch My Little Pony artifact, that toy is, is there building up the momentum and building up the money to give Hasbro the, the funds to just buy this valuable property outright when it hits ra 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 the rapids, when it hits the white waters, okay? What is, our, what is the relationship for Dungeons and Dragons in 1982? The relationship for Dungeons and Dragons in 1982 is the Society for Creative Anachronism. Is the Society for Creative Anachronism. So Society for Creative Anachronism has been around since the 60s. But there will be a deep relationship between the SCA and Dungeons and Dragons. There will be a Venn diagram of crossover that is absolutely immense. How many people are going to be interested in recreating medieval uh, lifestyles that aren't going to be interested in a game that allows them to systematically tell stories in any fantasy world that's all based on medieval um, like garb and weapons and things like that. It, the, the crossover is immense, right? And so you see, you see this rich relationship between the SCCA, between the SCA and Dungeons and & Dragons. And that's carried forward pretty much to this very day. Although I think today Dungeons & Dragons has far surpassed the SCA and is probably more well-known and, and also had much greater impact on important American cultural uh, icons like video games. So that is a J. Scott Garibay clear history of Dungeons and Dragons in the year 1981. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts on Dungeons and Dragons in 1981. Well, let me know in the comments below. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful day. Take care.